Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Manos and Manos, for uh, your kind invitation and in including me in this panel to talk on stemless uh, shoulder arthroplasty and how to avoid complications. Uh, this was introduced back in 2004 with the aim to preserve uh, the native bone by fixing it in uh, the metaphysial bone. This was first designed uh, by a biomet and it should not be confused with humoral resurfacing. Since then, a lot of companies developed those products with two types of humoral insertion. One is uh, screwed prosthesis and the second is impaction using fins. The rationale in designing those implants was easy implantation, especially in malunited fractures, elimination of periprosthetic fractures, preservation of bone for uh, later revisions, and restorations of the anatomy of the proximal humerus. Uh, regarding now the reverse total shoulder designs, they, they have the same indication as the traditional reverse arthroplasty and the same advantages to stemless total shoulder arthroplasties. We have limitations. The poor bone quality, metaphysial cysts, osteopenia and osteoporosis, metabolic bone diseases and fractures in the metaphysial area. In early complications, uh, early instability, which is rare, infection, vascular or nerve injury, and intra-op or post-op periprosthetic fractures. In late complications, loosening, stiffness, periprosthetic fractures, late infection, instability, heterotopic ossification, and rotator cuff tear, which is common. Uh, one of the... Uh, uh, studies, uh, first studies by Brunner, uh, with uh, uh, big uh, with a big number of patients, they found 10% uh, complication rate, but one humeral stem loosening, two periprosthetic fractures. Uh, a longer follow-up by Peter Habermeyer, they found one great tuberosity osteolysis and one periprosthetic humerus fractures. Another up to nine years, even a longer follow-up, almost 10% complications rate with one greater tuberosity osteolysis and one periprosthetic uh, humerus fractures. I underline only those uh, uh, complications which are related to the humeral prosthesis. Uh, another paper by Churchill, uh, big number of patients they had only one conversion of uh, stemless prosthesis to the stem prosthesis due to the poor bone quality of the proximal humerus. In 70 patients, uh, probably this was technically a uh, mistake, but they did, they had five intraop fractures of the metaphysis, which all healed. Another paper by Bell in 50 patients, they had no complications related to STEM. Uh, uh, now, regarding complications in reverse stemless arthroplasty, they had much bigger number of complications, the almost 18% complications rate, but only one humeral uh, component loosening. Another one in reverse arthroplasty, only one metaphysial fracture. Uh, the, a recent paper for, from uh, Offer Levy, which is have a, a, a mini stem, but this is uh, regarding cementless short metaphysial humor implant. He had two patients with undisplaced fracture of the humor metaphysis due to excessive bone impaction in very soft bone. This healed around the implants in three months with conservative treatment. There were uh, two early dislocations. Of uh, those patients, three sustained late traumatic periprosthetic proximal humeral fractures, which they were treated conservatively, conservatively and all healed with good function. Now, browsing the literature, all of the uh, periprosthetic fractures were treated conservatively with uh, very good results. While if there was a periprosthetic fracture in stem prosthesis, 
probably this would uh, uh, require fixation with either uh, plate and screws or, uh, uh, or cables or both. So uh, another, another paper by, uh, this was a multi-center study by uh, the, those surgeons, uh, very distinguished surgeons. They found that 17 cases had radiolucent lines which neither increased or decreased with time, and CT scans, uh, they found no signs of loosening. And they concluded that stemless total shoulder arthroplasty provides the same results as compared to total shoulder arthroplasty with humeral stem. Another comparative study with stemmed and stemless from Moroder from Austria, comparing the TESS and the Delta with the same follow-up at 34 months. They found scapular notching grade one in two cases of the stemless group, while in stemmed group, they found five cases with grade one and four cases with grade two notching. They found no distinct difference regarding complications. So in conclusion, we have in stemless prosthesis, decreased surgical time, we preserve the bone, we have low risk of periprosthetic fracture. It, it, it's easier to uh, take off the prosthesis during revision cases, and it's a good option in canal deformities. However, we need to evaluate the long-term survivorship and modes of failure. Now, coming back, how to avoid complications. We need to avoid patients with poor bone quality, metaphysial cysts, osteopenia and osteoporosis, and metabolic bone diseases, which mean good selection of patients and good surgical technique. Thank you. <laughs>